One of the most ancient pastimes has been the art of ball harpooning. Prehistoric cave paintings in France have been found of early man engaged in ball harpooning. Egyptian hieroglyphics denote Ramses II was a big ball harpooner. And even modern gangbangers mark their turf with signs of ball harpooning. Let's look at this earliest of sports and examine the art of ball harpooning together. Now this is one of the earliest and best of the harpooning games. Basically, you're shooting up a weapon that has a rope or something being dragged behind it that makes a virtual wall that you want these bouncing balls to strike. Now, every time a ball strikes it, it divides into two, becoming smaller and smaller until eventually it disappears entirely. That's how you clear the board. This particular one has different levels at different parts of the world. This is the Barcelona, Spain uh, world. It starts off with one ball and one captured ball. And you would think it's pretty easy, but uh, either I'm terrible at playing these kind of games, and I am, or it's a lot harder than it looks. Each ball has its own different bounce pattern. Some will bounce higher, some will bounce lower. Usually as they get smaller, they bounce lower to the ground, giving you less and less room. Now this particular stage has just one ball, but there's an obstacle in the middle of the board that prevents you from going left to right. So you have to use these ladders to go up and down which of course wastes time and it makes it easier to be struck by the bouncing balls. Now you do get different kinds of weapons and power-ups and of course you should try to use those to your advantage if you can. But I am absolutely terrible at these, uh, these types of games as you can see. Let's try a different uh, country. All right. Now you can see there's three obstacles here which make it really, really hard. You have to go around each one. <sighs> Let's try Leningrad. I'm better off in Leningrad. No obstacles here but two balls on the loose rather than one captured like it was in Barcelona. But there's a power-up. Awesome. So if you use the power-ups intelligently, you should be okay. Problem is, the operative word is intelligently. Boy do I stink at these games. Let's take a look at some other ones. Now here's an interesting uh, take on a game. This is by a different company. Yep. Chokey chokey. That's the name of the game. A little bit more uh, kitty style, but still fun. You play the magician, cowboy, fairy, or cook. And you'll notice right off the bat, it's a head-to-head -head there. And instead of bouncing balls, depending on what character you chose, you'll get some kind of theme that has to do with it, like the magician has dice. So I guess dice has something to do with his magic, and he's throwing playing cards up in the air, while the cook is shooting all kinds of foodstuffs, and uh, I don't know what he's throwing up there. Spatulas, forks, I'm not sure. And it's more of a head-to-head. -head. You can see that you have a power meter on the bottom, and a timer on the top. Looks like Mr. Chef beat me to it. Now, this is one of the weirder ball harpooning games. It's called Genix. And you're a family set in the Wild West. You pick which one you want to play. You've got the gambler, whoever she is, crazy uncle, the doofus. Banana coming! Now, this game I find a lot more playable because it's a little slower in speed. The balls bounce slower and much, much higher, so you've got a lot more room to run underneath them. And there's a lot of power-ups. You can see the pace is much slower in the beginning. It does quicken, so uh, for those of you that feel like, oh, it's too easy, it is in the beginning, but then it does get quicker. Uh, this game is a little different because uh, you can get hit multiple times. You've got uh, a life bar on the top there that once it's gone, you're dead. And you also have... Uh, a power button that once Bravo. it's full, you can, uh, depending on which character you are, have a different kind of power, which uh, becomes like a shield around you, and whatever balls strike it, pop. And the power can be used uh, several times until it's depleted. There it is. Banana Tommy has uh, bananas that fly around him. And it's also timed, and could be played by two players as well. You can see these balls go a lot higher 
than the Mitchell Pang game, which I found really hard to play. Let's try uh, Crazy Grandpa here. There's my special power. I find it a little bit easier to play, though I can see a lot of people saying this is a little too slow paced. Which it may very well be. I'm just a lousy player at these games. Now this one's a strange one too. This one uses the horror theme with your ball harpooning skills. You can see it uses all kinds of jack-o'-lanterns and spiders and anything that would be horror-esque. These backgrounds sometimes cause a little bit of a distraction because of the colors. I personally don't, don't like the backgrounds uh, getting in the way. I don't see that being really a playable challenge, more an annoyance than anything else. Here's some other... This one's a little bit better, I guess, to see, and you've got some power-ups as well. I guess baboons could be kind of scary. Put them in the background by a cemetery. That's a pretty gruesome picture there. Last one. Oh, boy. Okay, this one, if, you, if you're a horror fan, correct me if I'm wrong, but isn't that basically the poster for Evil Dead 2? just put side by side in a mirror image. That, that's what I see. I kind of remember that movie. And I'm sure someone will comment on the uh, fact if it is or if it isn't. I think it's Evil Dead too. Well, that's it and that's ball harpooning. So where will ball harpooning take us in the future? One could only guess.